Speaker, it was about a year ago the Prime Minister tried to push through changes to Parliament's rules to silence the opposition. Now that attempt ended in complete failure and he had to back down. But yet, here he is again, at it again, wanting to centralize his power. This time he wants to shut down debate and he only wants to show up for question period one day a week. Why is the Prime Minister so determined to avoid accountability? The right Honourable Prime Minister. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, we are pleased to put out a broad discussion paper on how we can make improvements to the functioning of this House of Commons so that members can better hold the government to account, so we can move forward on legislation, so we can make better work-life balance for the many uh, individuals with young families in this House, do a better job of uh, working efficiently here in Ottawa while serving our constituents back at home. I'm excited to be launching an open conversation for all members of this House to participate in, and I encourage the members opposite to continue to contribute their thoughtful ideas to this process. Order, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Speaker, the Prime Minister's plan undermines the very principles of responsible and accountable government. The fact that the Prime Minister doesn't want to show up to answer questions more than once a week shows how little respect he has for Canada's Parliament. Now, as inconvenient as he thinks it is, Parliament is actually the seat of our democracy, and central to that is the role of the Opposition. So can the Prime Minister explain to us why he's willing to undermine our system of democracy simply to get out of answering tough questions. <laughs> the right Honourable Prime Minister. I'm always pleased to be here in this House to answer tough questions and easy ones, like the member just asked me. Uh, the fact is we're always looking for ways to improve things, and as today as we reflect upon uh, the seat of democracies in London, uh, the fact is uh, that we are put forward a broad range of proposals, including one. Order, order. I'm having trouble hearing the answer. I know members are anxious to hear both the question and the answer. I ask members to cooperate and to in order, Honourable, yeah, Right Honourable Prime Minister has the floor. I'm happy to highlight that we're always open to improvements and ways to be able to hold this part of this uh, 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 government to account, uh, and that includes looking at where things are done elsewhere, including in uh, Great Britain, uh, in the UK, uh, where the Prime Minister has an entire question period uh, devoted to answering those questions. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, what the Prime Minister is proposing, he's proposing to change the rules so he can actually silence the opposition. His plan is to restrict debate, shorten the work week, and limit his attendance to question period to one day a week. No one has ever attempted gutting accountability like this. So I'd like to ask him a simple question. What would he have done if Prime Minister Stephen Harper had proposed the same thing? Prime Minister. The previous government would not have put out an open discussion paper or would not have engaged with the opposition. I proposed months of discussion in committee on the best way to move forward. We are happy to be launching an open conversation on how to improve the functioning of this, this parliament uh, in a way that meets uh, the needs of Canadian families and Canadian uh, uh, members of parliament. Uh, the fact is, we're happy that we're launching in an open way an important conversation that apparently the members opposite really don't want to have. The Honourable Member for Outremont. As is often the case, we didn't actually get an answer to the question from the Leader of the Opposition. This Prime Minister is going further than Stephen Harper would have ever dared to do telling Canadians he only wants to show up in question period once a week. So I'm going to ask the question again. What would the Prime Minister's reaction have been if Stephen Harper had dared to propose what he's proposing? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Again, Mr. Speaker, the way we are going about this is by opening a discussion, an open conversation uh, with the members opposite about how to... Order, order. The Honourable Member for St. Albert, St. Albert Edmonton and others, I know, will want to hear both the questions and the answers and will, I'm sure, manage to calm themselves. 
Both members in all parties can listen to what they hear, even when they don't like it, and not react. The Honourable, Right Honourable Prime Minister. I wonder about the school children in the gallery who are wondering at how effective this parliament actually is right now. We are proposing a ways to discuss how to improve the quality of debate, and allow the government to be held to account in a thoughtful, responsible way, and this kind of shouting is what they get. That's not worthy of this parliament. It's not worthy of the people they serve, Mr. That's Speaker. Right. The Honourable. The Honourable Member for Outremont. We really could replace him with a cardboard cutout. Mr. <laughs> and his peanut gallery would never notice the difference. If the Prime Minister sincerely wants to work with the other parties, would he accept uh, putting in place a proportional committee where no party could impose changes for, to their advantage? If he's so worried about the reaction of the students here today, will he stand up for once and show that he is a Democrat? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. I am very happy to be able to welcome all the young people uh, in the galleries today to announce that we are putting forward a budget that is going to help the middle class, that will ensure their future. That's what we should be talking about today. And the we can see that it's possible to make points without having everyone speak at the same time. We can make uh, good points all the same if only one person at a time is speaking. The Right Honourable Prime Minister, Canadians are concerned about their future and that's why we are happy to be able to present a budget which will invest in their future, which helps the middle class. And I'm looking forward to taking questions on what we are doing for Canadians because that is uh, uh, what is required of us in our work, to serve Canadians. I ask the Honourable Member for Port neuf jacques cartier to please calm down. The Honourable Member for Outremont. Mr. Speaker, a simple question. What penalty does the Prime Minister believe should be imposed on a minister who violates the Conflict of Interest Act? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Canadians expect that all parliamentarians act with a high level of uh, ethics and with irreproachable behaviour. We know that it's important to do that if we want to keep the trust of Canadians, that we take an approach that is worthy of the trust that Canadians have in us. And I have to do the, right honor the Honourable Member for Outremont. And when a minister breaks that confidence, what is the penalty? Instead of uh, turning around, the Prime Minister should answer the question, Mr. Speaker. To be clear, the Canadians believe that there's no problem with the Prime Minister taking a vacation, but Canadians do have a problem with the Prime Minister accepting illegal gifts, breaking the law, and then charging the taxpayers over $125,000. <laughs> Does the Prime Minister honestly believe that paying back a mere $4,000 is enough when he blew over $125,000 of hard-earned taxpayers' money? The right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as is the custom for previous Prime Ministers, uh, we repaid the cost of uh, commercial equivalent flights. Uh, the fact is, the RC but the, for the first time, we actually put in place a system of rules that oversee that because there was never that in, in previous uh, parliaments or under previous Prime Ministers. Uh, the other fact is the RCMP makes determinations on how to protect the Prime Minister, and we will not second-guess the decisions of the Prime Minister uh, that, the, uh, that the RCMP makes. The Honourable Member for Lanark Frontenac Kingston. Well, if he gets his way, we really ne never will get to second guess the Prime Minister. Right, exactly. The Prime Minister would put everybody's mind at ease if he would just agree that he won't use his majority to ram through changes to the standing orders without all party consent. Unanimity has always been sought for changes to the rules that divide power between government and opposition. 
For example, the committee that Jean Chrétien set up to review the standing orders had unanimous consent written into its mandate. But this Prime Minister seems to feel that decades of precedents count for nothing. So my question to him is this. Why the fuddle double won't he commit to the long-standing <laughs> practice that you don't change the rules without unanimous consent? <laughs> No, we can't do indirectly what we can't say directly. And I'd encourage them to be judicious in their choice of words. The, the Honourable Leader of the, of the, the Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the opportunity to rise and to respond to the member's question and to remind all Canadians that we have shared a discussion paper with members of Parliament as well as the public. This government, including myself, respects the work of the committee and I believe that they have the opportunity to have an honest conversation. I actually appreciate a lot of the work that the member opposite has done. I know the committee sat late last night and I know that conversation is starting. All we are asking is let's have a constructive conversation to really modernize the way this place works. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable member for Banff, Airdrie. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister once expressed his admiration for the basic dictatorship of China. Well, now it turns out that he's trying to bring that dictatorship to life right here in Canada. He's trying to avoid any accountability to Canadians by limiting debate and by giving the Liberals unprecedented control over the House of Commons and its committees. And on top of this, he wants to give all his Liberal MPs Fridays off, and it turns out he himself only wants to show up to work one day a week. So, Mr. Speaker, why does the Prime Minister have such a blatant disregard for being held accountable to Canadians. Yeah. Honourable Government House Leader. As I have shared with members in this House as well as with Canadians, our objective has always been to ensure that Parliament is more relevant for Canadians, to ensure that we can make this place more efficient, more predictable, more transparent and more accountable. That is the purpose of the discussion paper. It's a conversation we would like to have with all colleagues in this place. I'm also encouraging Canadians to be part of this conversation. As we all know, this place belongs to Canadians, and that's exactly who we're here to serve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member for Port neuf jacques -Cartier. Mr. Speaker, Canadians get up and go to work every morning to earn a living. And yet this government is thinking about cutting our working hours here in Ottawa. What a great example they're setting. Work less to spend more. What a great example, Mr. Speaker. Even thinking about it is immoral, and yet they claim that it's just a consultation. This Liberal government, will it get to work to create a prosperous Canada? Will this government respect all MPs and commit to getting unanimous consent for any rule changes? The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, our government recognizes the importance and the important work that MPs do both here in this House and in their ridings during the election campaign, we committed to modernizing Parliament to make it a workplace uh, that is uh, appropriate for the 21st century. Our goal is to ensure that Canada be uh, Parliament be relevant to Canadians and that it be accountable, uh, predictable and transparent. Thank you. Or Chilliwack Hope. Well, Mr. Speaker, the Liberals say they want to make Parliament more predictable. The only thing predictable around here is that the Liberals will do whatever it takes, including rigging the rules, to avoid accountability. Yeah. Predictably, the Prime Minister only likes to show up to places where it's all selfies, slogans, and superficiality. So when he finds an opposition instead of an audience, he predictably heads for the exits, since he loves to be loved. Will the Liberal Whip demand his MPs start applauding the Prime Minister more often so that he could be predicted to maybe show up here for question period more than once a week? Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, a discussion paper that I released was made available for members of Parliament as well as Canadians. I believe it's a reasonable discussion paper encouraging members in this place to have a conversation, to have a discussion. The member opposite is misrepresenting the document as there's many ideas being shared. We would like to see people actually bringing and having a thoughtful conversation where we can have opposing views, but really come to modernizing this place and bringing it into the 21st century. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Opposition House Leader. Mr. Speaker, the government or the House Leader 
introduced a discussion paper and then mere day, days later tried to ram that and is currently ramming that discussion paper through Parliament. This is not a discussion. This is not a conversation. This is a dictatorship. I implore the House Leader, I implore the government, all we are asking for is that we will all be able to come in agreement as precedent has set before any major changes are made. I'm asking the government to reset this horrid mess they've created and listen to all of us before any changes are made. The Honourable Government House Leader. Mr. Speaker, it is a discussion paper and I encourage all members as well as the public to read it in its entirety. There are many great ideas and we are asking the committee to actually broaden the scope of their study. We know that many ideas have already been presented. I have made myself part of that conversation. Every single member of parliament is here to do important work for Canadians. We would like to make this place more relevant to Canadians and I'm sure all members would agree that we can work better together. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Opposition House This Speaker. is unbelievable, Mr. Speaker, and there can only be one conclusion drawn. There's a quote I'm sure the Prime Minister is very familiar. It's, Solutions to important problems are decided not by party committee but by one individual. Well, you know who said that? Chinese dictator Chairman Mao. Right. Well, you know what? Oh! Canada is not China. Canada is not a dictatorship. Oh, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is not the Supreme Emperor. So maybe he could do Canadians a favour, go take another it. vacation, and don't come back until he's ready to stop acting like those dictators. Order. The Honourable Government House Leader. Order. Order. First of all, order, 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 I did not say. order, order. The member for Grand Prairie Mackenzie will come to order. If I have heard lots of members heckling, I have heard lots of members yelling and heckling, and I've heard enough of it. The, the, the honourable, the honourable House, government house leader has the floor. Order. This question period could be a lot shorter if it's not quiet. Order. Order. The speaker can only see so much, folks. Order. And I can only put up with so much. And I'm looking in all directions. The Honourable Government House Leader has the floor. We'll have some order. Mr. Speaker, I, I do believe that this is actually demonstrating more of a reason why this conversation and discussion is necessary. Every single member of the House is elected by their constituents to represent their voice in this place. It is important for us to have these conversations so that we can better serve the Canadians that we are here to, uh, to represent. These are tough conversations, I agree, but I think they're important conversations for us to have, and that's why I released a discussion paper not only for members of Parliament, for the public to also participate in so that we can have the important conversations that we need to have. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Opposition MPs continue to stand up to defend Canadians from the Liberal attack on democracy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Does that Prime Minister only want to have to show up to be accountable to Canadians one day a week? But I've never seen a more pathetic display of arrogance than I saw in question period today as he laughed and smirked as opposition MPs tried to hold him accountable for his actions. I can assure him, Mr. Speaker, that in the next election, Canadians will wipe that smirk right off his face.